I'd like to share with you a technique that I use in many of my presentations where I'm going to be teaching for an entire day. Maybe I'm doing a seminar on presentation skills, uh, speaking, whatever it would be. And during the course of the day, I'm going to cover quite a few different topics. In fact, I'll do this when I'm doing a two or a three day seminar. And so what I start out with is I take and put a, either use a whiteboard or use a flip chart, whatever seems to be appropriate for that meeting room. And I will ask people in the audience and I'll say what specifically, and I begin by telling them, I'm going to ask a couple of questions now and I want you to think about those. And I will tell people, I'm going to ask you what outcome do you have for being at today's meeting? When you leave at the end of the day, what did you want to get out of being here? What is it that you wanted to know? What did you come here for so that I make sure that you get that and we make sure that that happens? And so I ask that question and I give them time to think about it. And I, I explain a few things as I go along. I might ask that question and then go into some logistical things about the day where the you know, restrooms are and things like that, giving them a chance to think. And then I use a technique that involves audiences in the, the presentation in a very unique way. And that is, I begin to call on people. But instead of going up and down the room saying, stand up, tell us your name, where you're from, what, what part of the company you're with, what do you do? And then going down the row and back up the row that way, that is the most boring way and the quickest way to turn people off. You can't imagine what happens in people's minds. But what happens is, what I do is I turn and I point to somebody and I say, hey, um, tell me, what, what did you want to get out of today? And that person's a little bit startled and I wait. And once again, as I've taught in a, in a presentation on questions, there's no wrong answer to this question. Everybody can answer it. They can tell me what they came to get, and that's what they came to get. One guy said, I came for the donuts. I said, well, we had those. You can leave now. And he laughed and stayed for the rest of the day. But the thing is, you ask people, what do they want to get out of the meeting? And so I called on that person. Now, there's a significant thing there that I've also taught when you ask questions of an audience. Don't wait for someone to volunteer. They might. But I always call on people because that way they don't learn to not participate. The other people in the room also have to come up with an answer. There are some meetings where there's too many people in the room to ask everyone what their outcome for the day is. Uh, one safety meeting I do, I ask people, why do you want to work safely? And I could have 250, 300, 500 people in the room. And I say, why do you want to work safely? And then I start calling on two or three people randomly. At that point, after the second or third person, everyone in the room's thinking, this fool might call on me. He's not doing the up and go up and down the row rule. And, uh, and the, you know, they're, they're, they're going like, shoot, he might call on me and say, I better think of something. You have people in your audience who are sitting there going like, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna come up with a reason why I wanted to be here because I, I, I they dragged me here, I had to be here. So, and and they're, they're not gonna think of an answer until all of a sudden they see you calling on people and bouncing around the room. When you do that, they will do what it takes to protect themselves and start thinking of an answer. The trick there is with 500 people in the room, I'm not going to everybody. I asked five or six people, but everybody else in the room knew I might call on them. So they started thinking of an answer. I've gotten them to participate. So you go ahead and ask people what their outcome is for the meeting. What's critical about that is, as you write down these outcomes, you now know what the expectation of your audience is compared to what you came with in your agenda. And they don't always match up. I found in my experience, because people are paying to come to one of my seminars or companies hired me to teach a particular thing, that they match up pretty close. But there are occasionally where somebody's off a bit. Maybe they want to get something I'm not covering that's a perfectly legitimate desire. And I can say to them, hey, listen, I'll st let's, let, we'll have dinner afterwards and I'll teach that to you privately at that, that, that situation in, in a separate context because it doesn't necessarily apply to everybody. Once you have your outcomes, and you can do this as you develop your presentation, ask yourself, what's your outcome for the presentation? What's your outcome for the audience? Not necessarily for you, but what do you want the audience to think, say, or do as a result of your presentation? And then you use that, and the outcomes they give you, you can put these together, and then use that as a yardstick for whatever you're going to include in that teaching for the day. Because if you know it's something they need to know, it might not be an outcome they give you, so you're going to give them that. But if there's something they want and you leave that out, then they don't feel like they got what they came for. And they're not going to have a positive recollection of the meeting or the content in it. So you want to make sure that you give them a reason to, uh, to want to remember that. And you do that by using the yardstick of what are your outcomes for the audience and what are their outcomes. 
And if something doesn't fit one of those outcomes, if it doesn't lend itself to achieving that, you don't do it because you just don't have time to not cover everything that you can possibly get to. So you want to make sure that, and, and when you ask people what they want to get out of it, I can guarantee you they are going to listen closer to what you have to say because unconsciously you've given the message when you start out at the beginning of a two-day seminar or a three-day seminar and I ask people, what did you want to get? They know that I'm there for them and they're gonna be paying closer attention because they know I'm there for them, not just for me. This is about them, and now that I've personalized it, they're gonna listen and they're gonna pay much closer attention to what I have to say and what I wanna to convey to them. Now, one of, the, uh, one of the things you have to consider when you're doing content and asking that question, does it achieve the outcome that you're trying to achieve? You do have to keep in mind that you need a carrier. What's gonna keep their attention for the day? Maybe you're an outstanding speaker and you tell great stories. Great stories keep people's attention. It keeps them involved. I use magic. I do magic tricks and some of the magic tricks I do teach a lesson. I'll do a magic trick and the patter of the magic trick teaches the concept that I'm trying to teach. At the other, on the other hand, sometimes on a full day session, it's just time you need a break. And so what I do at that point is I go ahead and I do a magic trick that's just fun and entertaining. I have a friend, he puts cartoons up on a screen and shows those. By the way, their, their original cartoons, he's paid a cartoonist for. Make sure if you're using copyrighted material that you've either got permission or understand that there are some artists that will actually come after you. There was one speaker I knew that was using um, cartoons by Gary Larson. And people love those. They're great cartoons. But somebody, somebody called Gary Larson's organization, I guess somebody that didn't like him, called Gary Larson's organization and said, hey, this guy's using your cartoons. And uh, he got a call from uh, their attorney saying, hi, we're thrilled that you like using the cartoons, but we'd like to let you know that every slide you use with one of our cartoons in it, you need to pay us $75 for each time that slide goes up on a screen. If you're doing three meetings in a day and that goes up three times, you owe us, uh, two, what is it, uh, three times 75, uh, $225, good math there. Anyway, but... Um, right away these guys realized hey they needed to stop doing that so you could be putting your company and yourself at risk using copyrighted material because some people really do take offense at that and and will go after it but there are, is some great stuff out there you can share um, stories and other things like that and make sure they're always appropriate for the group um, entertainment one presentation i went to the the person there was famous for playing a YouTube video at the beginning of every presentation. It was a, a music video. And he would play a music video that went with the theme of that day's meetings. And people were always curious to see what he was gonna come up with. People looked forward to it. Uh, speaking of Randolph Air Force Base, the base commander there, he, um, he came out and the second in commander, the, the safety person there said, hey, um, the commander's gonna come out and tell a story. And the whole room broke into applause because this guy is known for his creative, fun, interesting stories and everybody wanted to hear another story from him. That's really outstanding because it involves the audience. So keep in mind your outcomes, but realize sometimes fun, something unique, interesting, stopping for a moment for people to do a puzzle or a break type of activity or anything, whatever, all sorts of different uh, things you can do to mix up a meeting. Those things have value in getting your outcome done, not because they're connected to the content, but they're connected to keeping people awake and involved, and that's important to realize. Don't miss out. Be sure to hit the red button on the lower right and subscribe. That way, every time we release a video, you'll be aware of it.